Jameson, and then we'll come on that up. A warm good evening. Welcome to Adam Thomas. I'm your jersey number 10. And what a week it's been in South African football. We ended off there for having a view of what Steadies did as far as the DDC are concerned. They're the champions of the DSTV Disky Challenge. But when it comes to the top division of South African football, well, there was so much to discuss from relegation being confirmed to the two uh, coaches meeting up against each other when Arrows came up against the Mami Lodi Sundowns. We'll look into that encounter as Steve took on Rulani in that match and nothing to separate them from those two occasions. And then the battle for number two between Orlando Pirates and Stellenbosch. No one was able to take advantage of the advantage that was given to the other. We'll unpack it all with the three men here in studio. First and foremost, still tears running down his eyes for the club that began it all. And that is Matthew Booth looking back at uh, just one season with Cape Town Spurs in the top division of South African football. A short visit in and out. Yeah, and uh, it was all undone before Christmas, really. Um, and I've said it before, you know, when you get stuck in the uh, Motsepe Championship for mm. so long, and then you have to, when you do get an opportunity to come up, you have to, you're stuck for an extra three weeks in the playoffs. Um, that planning is taken away from you. But ultimately, they had to wait until uh, post AFCON to really bring in some players. Mm. And they showed positive signs then, you know, but unfortunately, too little, too late. And when I looked at it, you know, you look for blame, uh, Pomodo. When, when you blame it, when you blame uh, a coach, do you say, you know, they had two coaches. It was Sean Bartlett and then Ernst Middendorf. Who was to blame? And then I looked at it and I was like, well, you know, Ernst Middendorf, 17 games. They had five wins so far this season for uh, Cape Town Spurs. And Middendorf got four of those wins. So to be fair, he put up a brave fight towards the end. The fight was not good enough. That's the unfortunate part. Um, they are going down to the Municipal Championship once again. Uh, the playoffs, did they have enough time to prepare? Mm. Did they sign the correct players? Did they sign the correct players at the right time? Uh, that is the question. When they got the quality and experienced players, was it already too late? Uh, th those are some of the questions that we ask ourselves when it comes to uh, Cape Town Spurs going down. Officially relegated, unlucky in and out, they are gone again. But it's hard to stay up. Again, I was looking at those numbers in terms of how and what it takes to stay up in the DSTV Premiership. Yeah. A couple of seasons ago, three seasons ago, Barocca, 23 points got them relegated. Then we had uh, the season after that, where 25 points was what was needed, uh, and you got relegated with 25 points. Last season, Marumo Gallants went down with 29 points. They were relegated. It is hard to stay up in the DSTV Premiership. If you stay in the Motsepe Championship for, for too long, you, you're basically getting what is it? I don't know, Ace Brace could perhaps inform us, but it's almost half of what the, the Premier League teams get. And they still have to travel, stay in accommodation, you know, so the costs are fairly similar. So already the teams in the second tier are hamstrung when it comes to wanting to buy players then going into the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So they're at a huge disadvantage. Yeah. No, but I mean, Matthew, I mean, you can plan for that. You start the season wanting to be promoted. There's a point where you kind of know, I'm going to be promoted. At some point, plans have to come into motion to say, okay, listen, now we're getting promoted. We got to, we've got the plan, the folder is here. Promotion plan, let's bring it out and get it into action. Can't start a plan then, surely. No, but um, my point is the finances. Suppose we're in the NFD for, for five years. Mm. That, can, that can suck you dry. And dipping into your own pocket, you know, investing, taking from, from other places, and then you get an opportunity to get into the Premier League. Do you have those funds mm. normally? The answer is, is, is no. Mm. And so therefore, you very much rely on your uh, junior, uh, your academies, and most importantly, your scouting. You have to be very, very shrewd in your, in your scouting. If you don't get it perfectly right, you're most likely going to go back down. But then we see a Stellenbosch with young players. I mean, if we're going to go to what Matthew's saying, young players, 
Do they do the job? Do they not do the job? Young players at Stelis managing to keep Stelis way up at the top of the table. No, the, the young players gave Stelis uh, a trophy. Uh, Culling knockout is in, is in the wine land mm. because of the young boys. They are fighting for second position, uh, KF Champions League. But on the same token where we're talking about something that is a little bit sad, but there's also a positive for, for Limpopo. Makesi is coming ah. up. No, no, no. Mark at the, at the <laughs> funeral, you are talking about the positive. <laughs> no, but, or, 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 at the actual funeral. No, Mamela. PSL is preparing. PSL don't wait until they're preparing now the names. Mm, mm, Moving mm. Cape Town Spurs, but one side, but Makesi, but, mm. but Cape Town Spurs, but... No, so the people doing the fixtures for next season, uh -uh. they've already... Uh -uh. <laughs> but also, you can't, you can't compare Magesi to what Cape Town Spurs went through, you see. How's that, that? That three, well, Cape Town Spurs came through the playoffs. Yeah. Magesi have been, they don't have to put up with that. So they can plan now. Yeah. They know what's happening, they can plan from now. Whereas Spurs didn't have that uh, ability. All right, there you go. What do you think in terms of uh, the reasoning as to how it went wrong for Cape Town Spurs? Let us know on hashtag SSDSKI. Here, back in the hot seat, the VAR, the spot on Ace Novo. We missed you last week, Ace. Bolung is lens, Bowenzan. Hey, man, I'm trying to lose, man. I'm trying to wrong. Because every week you have to give us more and more and more explanations, Ace. That's why we need your voice to this week. Have you got some stuff for us? Lots to look at, interesting points, something to look forward to? Uh, especially on Doxo, you know, Doxo. we've got, got quite a number of uh, interesting clips that uh. we'll be analyzing. Uh, uh, quite similar, yeah, but totally different, uh, different decisions that were given and we'll, we'll analyze them chunk by chunk. Dogso. Yeah, we, we missed you. Man. Hey, this yeah. season we've got to know Dogso, man. Denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. And when you do that, you get red card, but then sometimes you think everybody's done it, but it's only a yellow card. Then you're like, hey, Mara, why? Ace is going to tell you about that. There were plenty of those occasions this week. But now, let's get straight into the 30-second strike. That is where every single week we give you our best moments of the week. You can tell us at home on social media which one you think is the best moment. And every week, I start out with the one that I think is going to be not as good as the others. And then I go, and then I go, you know, all the way to I think with the one that I usually meet is the best one. But, <laughs> hey, this week it's tough, man. Um, uh, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know exactly why you're starting with me. <laughs> Take it away, Matthew. Why you're starting with me. <laughs> Because this moment of the week keeps you in third place. <laughs> so, yeah, this is um, a fantastic uh, Magula save mm. uh, on Enterprise versus uh, Richards Bay. And uh, the reason why I made this moment is because, not only because it's a great reflex save, which uh, Tito really should have stuck away, mm -hmm. uh, does very well to get into this position, but it means a lot of things. Unfortunately, Cape Town Spurs, it means they get relegated directly. For uh, Stelis, it means that they stay in second. Uh, so there's lots of little things, you know, but more importantly, it means that Richards Bay escaped that direct relegation uh, position and gives them an opportunity to catch up with Royal Aim. That is a big save. Yeah. That's, that's really well put. Very, very, very well put. Maybe not worthy of the third opportunity. <laughs> Maybe not worthy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fight for my one. So I'm going to go next. Because I, I, I know the one's coming is hot, but I'm gonna fight, guys. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna give you everything I can on this one. And here it is. Now, in the uh, Cambridge Oxford Dictionary, they use the word invincible, and the definition is impossible to defeat. And this is what you saw here as Mummy Lodi Sundowns continued the road to invincibility. 20 wins so far this season, six draws, and Peter Shalulile late in the game. They did not stop. They kept pushing. They kept fighting. They knocked and knocked and found a goal that continues the record-breaking run for Cabuyelo. That is my moment of the week as invincibility, something that has never been done in South African football, remains in our grasp. Mamela, you think you lung is a speed? No, 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 no. no I, I, I haven't introduced you. No, yet. Mamela, you think you lung is a no, speed? No, people are still uh, no, absorbing. I, I want to vote for your moment. <laughs> no, you can't vote. No, Mamela, Mamela. 30 I, I second want... strike for no. Kamuzo Manenze, please. <laughs> <laughs> if we could have that one now. <laughs> What's your moment, Kamuzo? Uh, the bold moment of the week has to go to Muchali. I, I think that's the best goal of the weekend. Um, 
If you look at it, they cut inside. He's the man that cut inside, plays the ball to Mango. He plays one touch, oh. it comes back to him. Look, look at the keeper. The oh. keeper does not even move. Oh. Look, look at the keeper. He does not even move. Oh. Well taken. He's speaking about uh, technique. In, in Afrikaans, as standing cake. That's what uh, Say Steven did. A, a standing cake net. Nothing no, 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 to do. No, no. That's, That's the finish. best moment of this week. That is a proper finish. But Ace. I saw when I was delivering my <laughs> my 30 second strike, you could feel it, right? You were feeling me. Oh, you've got a moment as well. Yeah. How how are you going last then? Yeah. Well, how do you leave number four to go? Ah, yeah. ah, ah, I didn't know. You snuck into the yeah, studio. You didn't tell because, me you had a moment. Because you know that when I ah, but do have a moment. It's something that has South it's, Africa it's a with our national anthem, and we can never say it's wrong. Ace, spot on. VAR, what is your? Uh, 30 second strike this week. No, you've spoken a lot about uh, Stellenbosch mm. and the achievements this season. And the key question that always comes to mind, is it sustainable? Mm. Is what they're doing sustainable? They have over 60% of their senior team coming from the DDC. Now this answers the question, is it sustainable? Yes. Now their DDC team for the first time has won uh, the, the championship of the DDC, which points to a brighter, brighter future for Stellenbosch FC. And that's the biggest moment of the week. But you're cheating. I mean, we can't compete in a confetti, so live to have a trophy. How do we I compete to, I with that? I told you, when, when I do have a moment, it's always a winning moment. <laughs> confetti uh, <laughs> and the youngsters. How do we vote against young players and development and lifting a trophy? Does anyone disagree? No, no, that's a good one. That's a good one, right? Okay. I knew it. I knew it. It always has that emotional touch to, and Ace gives us that one. However, speaking of emotions, let's get uh, to a look at how it was that they went down. Cape Town Spurs did not even lose a game this last week. They had a decent week. They picked up four points this last week. And still, by the end of the week, we're relegated. The week began with this here, where up against Royal AM, they found a penalty, handball. This game was on our DSTV stream. Remember, every game that is not live on TV is on stream. And there he is, the Tanzanian, in his 11th game, Michael Kamagi scoring. Yeah, he's the man. He's the man of the moment, I suppose. Um, you know, I should imagine that he's going to get snapped up uh, come, you know, the break. Mm. Um, and oh, you're already uh, shopping now? Oh, well, I should imagine because he's been fantastic, you know, from mm. left back. Um, he often gets into the final third, has the most successful passes in the final third and touches. So he gets forward a lot, has the most crosses. And then he also chips in with important goals. That's an interesting point that you're making, though, that, that clubs are now pushing their trolley through, you know, the uh, Cape Town Spurs uh, shopping centre well, and saying, hmm, saw. this one is nice, no. uh, this one is nice. Akamagi, fuck already mentioned. Saw. Oh, not that. Uh, ah, uh, when I saw getting a throw I heard Kamagi is on a shopping list already from Matthew. Who else do you think had the kind of season that would catch an interest of a club that's staying up and is still staying in the in the DSTV Premiership? It has to be uh, Cupido up top. Mm. Uh, I've liked the young man since the, his days in the Mutsipa Championship. Uh, 16 goals in all competition last season. Did not find uh, his confidence in the DSTV Prem, mm. but he's one for the future because of his age. He has got an eye for goal and he knows where the goals are. He, he stacks them in so easily. Aggressive also, which is something that is key in the mm. DSTV Prem. Yeah. Velibai as well, I think also impressed me, you know, in periods. So, Pewa. Uh, yeah, Pewa as well, yeah. yeah. Lots and lots of good quality players there. And where will we see them? Will they stay? Can Spurs hang on to the quality that they have and fight another campaign in the uh, uh, Mutsepe Foundation Championship and get back to the top division next season? Can they? Can they manage to hold on? Or will they have to let go of let go of some of the players that they have right they'll, now? They'll probably have to, but they've got to be shrewd in what they do and don't. Um, mm. But ultimately, you know, Stellenbosch, you know, Spurs have always had a very healthy uh, youth academy. So if they revert back to that and make sure that that works, um, then surely they can get back sooner rather than later. Yeah. So Kamagi in that previous game, heroic, and then Ace. In the next encounter, they take on Super Sport United. Spurs desperately needing to get uh, all three of the points there and stay in the fight alive. They only managed a point with a nil-nil draw, and Kamagi made it even harder for his team from hero to villain. Yeah, look, uh, let's go straight to that one mm. uh, because it sets the tone for various others mm. that we, we're going to uh, bring on and analyze. Uh, 
You know, I, I like how calm the referee is. He, he first looks at the injury, deals with the situation. Uh, the red card is never late. It's always on time. But it's shocking because Kamagi was not ready. Like it, no one in the red and white kit there thought there would be a red card. No, look, because for him, he's, he's not looking at the variables that the, the referee is looking at. And, and the key variable there is that the distance is fine. It's not too far from the D-line. It's not too far from the penalty area. The direction is towards goal. Campbell is headed towards goal. Yes. And, and now when you look at the proximity of the other defender, mm. that defender is behind mm. play. And that's a critical consideration for the referee, that the closest defender that could have covered for him is behind play. Can I make it's a point? It's not only about being close to the action, uh, he's behind play. But he could have still made a foul in the box, Gumete, caused the penalty, got a yellow card, and that penalty could have been missed. It's not like he was gone, gone, that, gone, gone. That, that's why we... I could have, he could have still made a slight tackle and Very the good point, uh, Thomas. That's why we call it an opportunity. Yeah. We, we're not saying he was going to score the goal. We're saying it's an opportunity to score but a goal. obvious. Yes. But the obvious, it, if I can still be fouled. What, what makes it obvious is that the closest defender is behind play. That's the variable that the referee would have looked at. That's something the dog saw doesn't take into account how quick that defender is mm. or how slow that defender is or what he maybe could have done. Mm. It's where he was positioned at that, uh, at that particular time. At the moment the foul is committed. So that one, dog saw. Denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, red card. Red card, spot-on decision then by the ref. many people saw this incident and thought, Ronwin Williams, why is he not getting a red card when those who watch Extra Time who are sitting in the stands were saying, Amar, here's denying an mm. obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Tell me why this one was yellow, not red. Now, let's go straight to that one, and, and you'll see uh, the reasoning that the referee used. Shows the yellow to Ronwin. Uh, correctly so, mm. in my opinion. But he was uncomfortable. Correctly so. No, he also thought that it could have been dog so. But look at that moment. That's a moment of possession. So we agree that the player is in possession. Mm. Now we look at the direction. The direction is not directly towards goal. But also look at the, the closest. Uh, a player is, is in line, the closest defender to the action is in line with the ball. Mm. It is not behind play like we had in the earlier one. Direction not directly to goal. The player, uh, the, the, the defender that is closest to the action is not behind play. So the referee would have looked at those variables and said there is no opportunity that is obvious for this player to go on and score a goal. Mutizwa was up. He was saying that's a red card because we are the Mutizwa. Uti, ngandulala, ngakor. The first touch, the first touch lets him down because the first touch is taking him towards the touchline. Mm. And the first touch being on the outside of his foot, going to goal. Mm. Yes, Don't but it. his first, his first touch is going away from goal, <coughs> and that's what the. If there is one box that is not ticked, then Doxo falls out, and that's hence the yellow card, the correct call. Then we also saw, same game a doxo situation that then does result in a red card as Lubusa gets sent off. Was this one deserved of doxo? I love the fact that we have all three of them mm. uh, running one behind the other so that we can have our comparative analysis. And nicely. understand it. Let's, let's go straight to this mm. one and find out why the referee in this instance showed the red card. And again, we look at, at the different variables that are applicable for Doxo. Uh, direction towards goal, distance uh, uh, to the goal, the, the proximity of the nearest defender. Mm. But look at that moment. Nguse is on now, his way. Now we all agree he's got possession. Mm. We all agree that the direction is towards goal. We all agree that the distance is such that there's an opportunity to score a goal. Mm. Now, the only thing that remains to do is to look at the nearest teammate of the player that is committing the foul. Behind play. Behind play. Mm. And, and that's a critical consideration. 
and, and we won't speculate as to whether or not he, he would have, as Matthew said earlier, he would have been able to run fast enough to catch up with him. Mm. All that we're saying is there was an opportunity and the opportunity was obvious. Mm. What made it obvious is that the direction is towards goal, the distance is favorable, he's got possession and the nearest defender is behind play. And that's all that we look at and that's why the red card there is spot on. Spot mm. on. We've now understood denying obvious goal-scoring opportunity. But this game, guys, mm. that's 46 minutes in. Sundowns are down to 10 men. I then went to look at the stats and thought, okay, how did it end up as a nil-nil draw? Sundowns had 80% possession in this game with 10 men. They made 657 passes to 170. 19 shots, which was their highest number of shots all season long in a game where they were down to 10 men. Yeah. And Watenga was the difference between the two sides. Well, you've, you've answered your own question there because that's what, <laughs> that's what prevented Sundowns from, from going ahead. It mm. was this man, Watenga. He's on loan, by the way, from Sundowns. And I drew my tongue in cheek after if he would have been allowed to have played if uh, Sundowns hadn't won the league already. <laughs> because what happens uh, when you're on loan from Amoridi Sundowns? Well, generally, it depends on player to player, but generally uh, they don't allow the, the, the player to play against them, mm. especially if they're contributing to their salary. Uh, which is, I think, fair enough. Mm. So, you can, and you can see maybe here as an example of why that thinking exists. Mm. This guy is on our payroll, he's on loan from Mami Lodi Sundowns Wateng, and he plays a game of his life to make sure a nil-nil draw happens against Golden Arrows. I think top uh, performance for me, I think, is positioning. Uh, reflex save, stayed for, on his feet for as long as possible. He commanded his area. His reflex saves were very key in um, Arrows not conceding a goal. He kept his fourth clean sheet in all competition mm -hmm. and a top performance. So there you have it. That's how those uh, encounters went. Now let's move on to what's going on on our DSTV stream. Whenever the game is not live, on your television screen, you can go to DSTV stream and check it out. Supersport United against Kukuni United here. Supersport, look at the time on the clock here as Krobla scores. Three minutes to the final whistle, Supersport United are up. Yeah. You thinking it's over? Yeah, they rotated nicely across the box, uh, but naughty for them, not letting putting more pressure on the crosser. Matozzi does very well, and that's a fantastic finish from Probla, by, by the way. And so is this one, very late on in the game, and Gavin Hunt must have been absolutely fuming at this. Yeah. I mean, that is not the time to concede a goal. You've just scored. Surely, shut the gate now. Critical phase of the game. Uh, we always speak about game management. How are you going to manage the game? Uh, they just scored with four minutes to go. Uh, that is uh, Super Sport United. Mm. Then they are celebrating. They are not concentrated or focused in that moment. Uh, when you're looking at Skukuno, he is waiting for an opportunity. As soon as he drops, he puts it in the back of the net. Critical phase of the game when players are thinking about the final whistle. Mm. It's important and they didn't focus in that moment. And we were just talking about Watenga being a lone player now for Super Sport United. Former player of Super Sport United, Ohizu. He shows no mercy in the dying moments mm. and gets a point for Skukuni United. So, danger there. Then, there was more on the DSTV stream to take a look at as Cape Town City took on Swallows in the midweek. And again, this game was one that ended up with uh, Cape Town City finally being able to put behind them that long, long run of not being able to find victories. Darwin Gonzalez, 72 minutes in, relief. You can see it. Yeah, not the best goalkeeping from Ekpe and uh, Gonzalez sniffing out the fact that it might, he might spill it, uh, doing well, very well to tuck this away. And here again, you know, they rotate the ball in front of the box. Mm. This is a this is an absolutely superb ball in from Makoone. I mean, the way that he, the composure that he showed and shaped his left foot around that to curl it from goalkeeper into uh, Pacienza, mm. come on, was just superb. Mm. So that's all the midweek games. Kaiser Chiefs then took on uh, TS Galaxy in a game where there are two red cards for Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. The scoreline ending up 2-2 turned out to be a bit of a classic, this one. But it starts with this goal. Good pressing from Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, they set the press nicely. Uh, they let them receive. Look at how it, um, in that in case, uh, Mutetra is pressing. Good anticipation coming from uh, Chief Aviro. Um, scores the opening goal of the game. Goes on to grab a brace for himself, which makes it four in all competitions for him. And uh, I, I think and we need to give credit to Mtetwa. Good pressing, good harassment, take away space and time. But what's Mbelase doing? Mbelase, he's building from the back. That's what the only Going thing that, backwards. No, the only thing that he doesn't do well in that moment is he does not scan. 
When I say it does not scan, it means it does not have the information of what is happening behind him. Because before you receive, you ask for the ball, you need to check <laughs> if, if, if you can receive. Mm. Opponents are, are the opponents coming behind you. We say you gather information by scanning so that you know what's happening. But you use you. the word pressing trap, right? And what I understand pressing trap to mean is the opposition are saying we've analyzed Butubanum mm. Nandingale in that defense. In, in some instances, it's not about our Mnandanga. In some instances, they check, are you lethargic in position? Mm. Are you relaxed in position? Yeah. So they let you, you have no it. No, no, no. Umnandi, umnandi. But yeah. they let you receive first touch, second touch, as soon as you think, now I can turn. Mm. Then you feel, you feel the pressure. Take away space and time, and that's what they do, kids the Chiefs, they get the goal. Did they pressing trap on you back in the day? Were you that guy who was comfortable with the ball at the feet? Yeah, I don't think we even used that uh, terminology when I was still playing, you know. Mm. Um, they, they used to put pressure on you, that's, that's what we used to say, but not... not Let they, the guy who you feel is the least comfortable in possession have it, yeah, so we can go for it. do that, absolutely, without a doubt. They mm. sus, sus uh, centre-backs out, goalkeepers out, and number sixes out. Mm. So when you try and play out to the back like Mbalasi does, you've got to be quick on the ball. Whether you scan or not, yes, scanning is important, but you've got to be quick on the ball. And he, he looks up at, uh, I think it was Sanoko or Matlango there, and then he decides not to give it straight away. You know, as soon as you, you self-doubt or you second-guess or you change your mind in Hesitation. that situation, in your own box, you're asking for trouble. And that trouble came with a goal. Kaiser Chiefs are one up here. Then, VAR, we see Edmilson find himself get into trouble and another red card in a season that's been marred by mm. quite a lot of ill-discipline at Kaiser Chiefs. What happens for this first yellow? Look, <clears throat> when I look at it, I think that the first yellow was shown for dissent. Because, again, we always commend referees for mm. positioning themselves uh, close to action at an angle where they can see what's happening. The referee quickly blows his whistle, points at the penalty mark, and I think the, the dissent shown for that decision is really the reason why the, the first yellow is shown because... It when, can, yeah, you're saying it, it cannot it, be for the handball. When he does that, it is because he has made his body unnaturally bigger. Is that that's, not a yellow card that's offense? What, that's what is punished by the referee. Mm. It is not a deliberate handball. He is only punished and a, a, a penalty awarded against him for making his body unnaturally bigger. So that's why I'm saying, and I'm speculating here because I couldn't hear what he was saying to the referee, that the referee went in there. I don't think he had an intention to show a yellow, but uh, I think he must have uh, shown a, a, a strong dissent mm. for the referee. Second yellow show. card here. Yes. And, 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 again, and again, I love how this referee uh, uh, does the, the office work. <laughs> I love how he does the office admin. work, the admin work. It means he has not recorded it in his mind that I have already shown a yellow to this player. He takes out the booklet, he writes on, on the correct side, the, the yellow team side. He sees that, oh, this is in fact the second yellow that oh. I have shown uh, to this player and that is why after the admin work has been completed, the red card comes out. Mm. Uh, and that's perfect refereeing because you don't want to make your decision based on whether or not a player had been shown a card earlier on in the game. I, I always uh, say to the referees that I mentor, forget who you have booked, forget who you have cautioned early on. Let the booklet tell you, let the admin be the one that tells you that this is a second yellow mm. and the red must come out. Well, so there if, was the uh, if, handball and then this was the incident that led to the second yellow card. So if that he, is a bad tackle. If, if he had remembered Brace that he had booked him, do you think sometimes referees are lenient if they remember that it might be a second yellow? You, you want to avoid a situation where you remember that I've already cautioned this player and you become either lenient or you want to book him unnecessarily. For me... That tackle was rough. Eh? That tackle over the ball. Uh, it, it's just quite lucky that uh, the, the striker, you know, moved his, his feet quite quickly. They went over the ball. Could have been a straight red uh, on, on any other day. Uh, and, and that's why I, I like the fact that the referee did not recall 
that he had already booked this player. Showed him a yellow card, deemed it as a reckless challenge, correctly so, and then the red card comes out. So for Galaxy, they were let back into this game in two ways. Chiefs have scored with uh, Chivavero, then the first yellow card leads to a penalty. Matlangu steps up, takes it, they're back on level terms. Yeah, Chivavero uh, doubling his tally to four, and uh, this man goes to, um, well, his second goal will take him to six. Um, and this is a very good uh, penalty. Later on in the show, we might see the second penalty of the week, mm, we which actually goes the other way. So uh, very clever from him and uh, very astute from the penalty spot. Chiefs take the lead, though, despite uh, being down to, uh, uh, in a game where they're down to 10 men, they do take the lead. And yet, it's one that, again, has a little bit of controversy involved. Yeah, um, um, he gets goal number um, number four in all competitions that it's available. But also on the wall, Bryce is here to, to look at Sitebe and um, Mujella. Uh, was the push enough to be blown for a foul? Uh, that is the question, Bryce. But you can see the referee's positioning, can see what is happening in front of him. Was that enough to be judged as a foul? Uh, the, the incident that happens in the wall there. No, I, I think that the referee was correctly positioned. Mm. And, and we, we don't have an instrument to, to measure if, mm. if things are, are, are enough or, mm. or not. Mm. What we look at is whether or not a foul has been committed. And if a foul has been committed, mm. the referee will always give it. Has Sitebe got in the way there? Uh, what do you think? Has he simply tried to block him off? Or has he really committed a foul on Mugello? You, you can see the way that um, Chiefs have set up what they were trying to do there. And Sitebe was simply there to block any, any runners. Mm. And uh, he ends up doing that. But, you know, he, I think if the referee was to see that again, he would probably blow for a, for a foul uh, because the arm is raised and catches uh, Mugello in the, in the face. Uh, but I think Chiefs get away with one there. There was a game of braces, this one, because Matlangu then found another goal to get TS Galaxy back into it. Galaxy fighting for a top eight place in this one, and they just refused to let Kaiser Chiefs get away with this one. Vidal's corner, Matlangu's finish. That's why I'm not a fan of uh, zonal marking. It's difficult to head the ball from a standing position. Look at all the DS, uh, TS Galaxy players. They're all taking two or three steps to to elevate themselves, to try and meet the ball at the highest point. And in that instance, Chiefs are trying to head from mm. a standing position. And that's why I'm not a fan of um, men marking. I'd rather do mix marking. And in that way, you generate a little bit of um, height in, in terms of the two steps that you take to elevate yourself. It's interesting there, Vidal, I haven't seen much of him this season. And that's his fifth assist uh, of the season, taking him to second. Mm. So quite, quite fascinating. Well, there. when he's on, he makes a difference, <laughs> does Vidal. However, a man who was not even on the field then picks up a red card. Peterson, we don't really see, but what can you put together that makes a guy who's sitting on the bench see red? Colorful language. <laughs> it can only be colorful language. It can only colorful be colorful language. is everywhere in a stadium, Ace. If, if you look at, at what's happening there, the referee has blown uh, for the free kick mm. and as he comes close to manage the situation uh, Mr. Peterson gets close there and I think the choice words were directed at the opposition player but unfortunately for him he sent those choice words at a time when the referee was close to the action mm. but most importantly the referee is there to defuse the situation you get this man coming from the uh, bench, pouring petrol into the fire. Mm. The referee will take action. Is it paraffin? It's, no, it's petrol. Oh, okay. But yellow will also, <laughs> will also put the, the fire down. Even a yellow no, will put no fire down. No, there's no yellow for insulting language. I'm not soft, man. Pantuga from the stands, everybody's swearing in a stadium. You know, maybe one day we'll be granted the authority to show red card to fans as well so that they can be taken out of the venue. <laughs> there you go. Peterson has his marching orders. 2-2 Kaiser Chiefs and Galaxy. What a game that one was. Now, Pumuzo Manenze will be with us for the next part of the show because we'll be seeing Orlando Pirates beating Chipa United 2-0. Uh -oh. Whether he'll stay for what happens next to Orlando Pirates against Richards Bay, that is a thing that we are still waiting to see. 
Stay with us to find out. Lots to talk about next. The Lando Pirates are continuing to chase for the uh, second place in the DSTV Premiership, and they made that chase even more promising against Chipa United. But the top goal scorer in Mabasa, well, I want to find out from the guys in the studio whether he should be missing a couple of games after the tackle they made in the game. He does score here. Yeah. Goal number one, Monyani with the perfect cross. <laughs> yeah. And he was instrumental in this game with Monyani down the right-hand side. Got to give credit to Moniani because um, you know he's played second fiddle to Lebitso since he's arrived, and he's hit the ground running here. You know, so he's shown great mm -hmm. attitude coming off the bench and getting his opportunities Look again, here. Both on the goals, right hand side, Moniani looking to make right it another side. one. Absolutely, and getting those crosses in. You know, then it's rotated here, and uh, Majahoro, you know, again his arm is away from his body. Very good decision from the referee, mm -hmm. but Moniani really important for both goals, getting in from right back. Importantly, so. Something to observe is from one full back to another, it's from Munyani to uh, Mayela. Machogoro making his body unnaturally bigger. Mm. Uh, Tsekhofazo Mabasa gets goal number 15 uh, in the league. It's 18 in, in, in all competitions for him. What an excellent season he's having. Great finish there against Nwabali, no less. One of the best goalkeepers on the continent, the Nigerian international. But. Pumozo, you want to take us in greater detail in how that first goal came about mm. uh, of Mabasa's, of the two that he got on the night? We, we always speak about uh, tactical flexibility, and when you look at that goal, you're going to see tactical flexibility because when you go to that moment and show it, you're going to see that Orlando Pirates has just won the ball back. I'm spiraling Tito Maswangani. He's going to do a 360 with purpose, though. He's waiting for Munyani to get into position with that 360. The end of God is on Tsekho Fatsomabas on top of your picture. It's going to go on and score the goal. I'm spiraling. At the bottom of your picture is Munyani. But one thing that is the error in the middle of there is Makaula moves away. And when Makaula moves away, he's the man I'm spiraling now. He's the six at Pirates, but he's becoming a 10. Tito is the 10, he's becoming a six. Look at the double eights. That's tactical flexibility. The diamond on the middle of the field. Let's look at the space that Munyani is going to exploit now when this move goes forward. He exploits that space, uses his pace, but when he gets to the bar line, one thing he does, he looks up and he plays that ball on the far post. Makaula attracts the nearest defender, who is Justice Chabalala, and then on the far post, Mavasa is at hand to slot it in the back of the net. One thing that I love about that, tactical flexibility, the players are allowed to change position during the game and uh, during an attacking move. Makaula does well to attract attention to be able to free Mavasa in the box. For me, for me uh, Tito was fantastic, but what really did that move for me was the first touch from Manyani because he sees that space, the red circle that Pumuzza had shown. And that, when he, you might think it's a heavy touch, but it's not because he's given that ball for himself to attack it, to make sure that there's nobody else that can catch up with him. He knows that attack, that space is there to be attacked, and it's a great first touch and good cross. But should Orlando Pirates have finished with all their men on the field? Should there have been a dampener on Mabasa's night where he got a brace against Chippa United? Spot on's going to tell us. Yeah, look, let's go to that moment. And, and I think uh, both the assistant referee and the referee, in fact, both assistant referees and the referee missed that one completely. Uh, perhaps because they were expecting uh, that ball to be cleared. Uh, away uh, from that area by the defender. But surely that's excessive force. Uh, it's serious foul play, worthy of a red card. And we'll see it uh, uh, from different angles now, how he, without any intention to play the ball, excessive force, look at that. He goes in, he makes sure that uh, he catches him on the ankle. Mm. That should have been a red card. And everybody in the studio is making signals and saying, Thomas, that was against Richards Bay, not in the previous game against Chippa United. Sorry, sorry, guys, I'm ahead of myself here. <laughs> but yes, that was in the, the uh, match against Richards Bay. Terrible tackle. That was just after the halftime break. Let's go back to how things happened in that game and how it was that there, that frustration existed in Mabasa. Pirates were 1-0 down. Mm. Mabasa's tackle there shows you frustration exists. And the reason they were 1-0 down is Sane Lebans. It's an elephant because when you look at that moment, Thomas, it's 11 against 3. I don't understand how Orlando Pirates concedes in this moment because if you look at the black shirt, it's all 10. 
plus China is, is 11. And Richards Bay only has three players in that, in that instance. But as they always say, if you've got players there that don't have a role to play, get them away because now you start passing on responsibility and the guys that are supposed to be man marking in that instance ends up not man marking because there's too many players. It's uh, three white shirts against uh, all 11 of Orlando Paris. They should not be conceding a goal in this instance. But let's give credit to Barnes. He finds the space in the pocket. He finds the ability to, to just turn his body to be able to just use the instep technique mm. to put the ball in the back of the net. A well-taken goal that makes sure that that goal, when it goes in and they manage the game and they see the result through, it means that it's done with Spurs. You were just praising Monyani for his ability yeah. going forward. Yeah. But he's the man maybe to blame there for how that goal starts. Well, I think both he and Lamini. Lamini was in front of Unsundwana and really they should be both closer to him. You know, you shouldn't be allowing him to get a free header there. Although he misheads it, you know, and then is able to pick up the, the pieces. Um, he does very well to get the ball across to Barnes. But what I like about Barnes is that he, ha he, he showed so much composure. He didn't, want to, he didn't lash at the ball with his laces. Yeah. He saw the spot. He saw the line of defenders inside him and decided in the moment as it came across him that a nice little composed side yeah. foot was the best mm. option. But this match was three points that came from defensive ability from Richards Bay and the passion that the defense had. Gineka here exemplified that with the captain's armband on and just how he celebrates every tackle that he made in the game. I did the game and uh, uh, for me, you know, more and more it's, it's about messaging, positive messaging. What team do you put out as a coach? Look at that. How many sixes do you put in the team? And uh, those sort of messages from him, which seems like a simple tackle, but it's a very good covering tackle. But the celebration afterwards mm. sends out that, that message to the rest of his teammates that they better pull up the socks because certainly he was. And he was a soldier on the day. I mean, his nose is bleeding here. And still, congratulations blocking that one because Magula was beaten by the cross. He puts his body on the line, gets the header, clearance, makes sure Pirates can't score. Key positioning, uh, key for me was his positioning in the game, the timing of his tackle. But one thing that Kanu did tactically in this game was play Lamini in the, in the midfield, where in the defensive midfield, whenever they needed to defend, he just tucked in between the two centre-backs, they became a five. That's the frustration that Orlando Pirates had. Plus the three central midfielders in front of them, they blocked the passing lane because with Orlando Pirates, it's the small triangles that they play around you to try and open you up, but they were tactically disciplined. Can you explain why Pirates struggle against the teams at the bottom of the league this season? They've got, what, five draws against teams in the bottom five, lost against Cape Town Spurs, lost now against uh, um, Richards Bay. What happens to Pirates when they're facing opposition they think they're going to beat? In, in my opinion, most of those teams uh, are set as a, as a low block. So the, the three tens of Pirates struggle mm -hmm. to find that space. And then most importantly, they're a little bit impatient in trying to get that goal. But for me, Richards Bay, what they did well, particularly in the first half, is that they actually played quite an expansive game. They didn't sit back in the low block. Mm. Barnes sat out wide, Sundwana sat out wide, and they always had that release. Um, I, and they managed to keep the ball quite well in the first half. I, I, I disagree slightly. They, they sat with seven players behind the ball at all time. Mm. They let Barnes cheat. They let Sundwana cheat. And I think it's Muyaba up top. But the rest of the seven players stayed behind the ball at all times but they use the pace of the front three in terms of the transitions and finding spaces in behind. So in a nutshell, you're saying, Matthew, Pirates just can't find the keys to the bus when a bus is parked? Um, it depends on how, on how the team sets up. You know, for me, they're eventually going to find it if uh, they sit back from minute one. Mm. You know, and uh, a lot of those teams, um, three, of, three out of those five teams have done that, in my opinion. And so it just needs a little bit of patience. And you can't go knocking on the door when nobody's answering. You've got to find the back door or a window down the side of the house to, to get in. And I think that's what Sundance perhaps has done very well. They found ways of breaking into that house. Now, for Orlando Pirates, they went into that encounter knowing that they could have gone to second position had they taken advantage of what happened in this game. Earlier on Saturday afternoon, Swallows take on Stellenbosch, everybody thinking Steli's too strong, too strong. In the opening minutes, we saw Reynas and Vasadin saved by Akpe, and then this goal. Yeah, we'll... That goal really set the cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. No, we have to give uh, credit to, to Muchali, he finds the goal, but I want to look at it a little bit differently. We've already spoken about this a little bit earlier, but for me, it's Musanya Tama. Last season, 
they were in trouble and Musa Nyatama saved them from relegation, even qualifying for the top eight. Again, given this huge responsibility to save a team of this magnitude, he does it once again, uh, Musa Nyatama. An excellent goal from Mutali. Take nothing away from, from the finish. There was nothing Stay Stevens could do in goals. Mango continues to have a very good second half of the season here. He wouldn't be happy with this one, but he doesn't let him drag him down. He misses a one-on-one, -on -one, but then pulls himself together. Yeah, um, I think he, he, he knew that Molossani and uh, Taure were having an off day. One of the few mistakes from Molossani this season, actually, getting caught just a bit too sluggish on the ball. And I like the fact that Mango, you know, shaped for the far post, but tried for the near. Uh, but unfortunately, he didn't get that that one. But this one, he does that nice little uh, bench run to stay onside. And this is also a very composed finish, mm. letting the ball that coming coming across him with a, just a little left-footed uh, side foot to the far post, allowing the spin of the ball to take it, just, just to creep it inside to the far post. Swallows, another season in top division football, guaranteed with that victory. Musa Nyatama needs to be given credit to one of the young coaches in the DSTV Prem. And uh, he has saved this huge brand who has uh, Morocco Swallows twice now in a row. I just hope the planning will be a little bit better for Swallows. I don't think they are a team that deserves to be fighting relegation every season. We need to see them fighting for that top five. But also, uh, you must go and help uh, Swallows. Yeah. Mango, 90% of the time is caught offside. He could be scoring more goals. <laughs> the coach needs to teach him how to look at the assistant referee and beat that it's, offside it's, it's But called, why would he need to change called, anything? You heard you defending him for the, he was offside the other night no? and for a week and a half saying he's not offside. For any, for any young striker watching, it's called the bucket run, the half moon run to be able to bend your run to stay on side. That is he, he made it and, and caught <coughs> this or this time. Yeah. But if you watch the match, uh. there, there are at least nine to ten different occasions mm -hmm. where he, he just couldn't find How's his How's is surprised? How's Zeylungi? Ah, he's, he's a, a top, matter, he's a top strike. How's uh, Perfect. <laughs> time for the break. After the break, we go to Moses Mabida Stadium where Amazulu took on Kaiser Chiefs in another game that had so much to discuss. Let's get to taking a look at what happened when uh, Amazulu hosted Kaiser Chiefs uh, at the Moses Mabida Stadium. And it started, I'm sure some of those were not even in their seats when uh, the first goal finds the back of the net. Early goal, Pomozo, Amazulu will be kicking themselves as to how early this happened and how it did. You have to look at this. Uh, I'm posing it here because uh, Felix can't progress. So he has to play the ball back. They have to rebuild again. Look at the back four. Look at the uh, Ngema that I'm spiraling in the middle. He's going to receive. And as soon as he receives, look at Kaiser Chiefs trying to press. Now, the end of God is on Dupree on the top right of your screen. He's going to go on and score the goal. The ball goes wide. Now, Chiefs can't press them here because they're outnumbering them. It's three versus two. They'll be able to come out of this press that is uh, Amazul. But in this instance, look at now the five. Now it's five versus three in this instance uh, for Kaiser Chiefs. Now they can press. Now the press is on. When you roll it forward, look at now. He's trying to find Felix with that pass. Now, let's look at the pace of Dupree. He's also waiting. That is the passing, uh, the pressing trap. As soon as he goes there, look at Dupree. He gets there the quickest. This is planned from training, and they've identified um, Felix in this instance to say, when the ball goes to him, mm. we press, we go hard, we go aggressive. He wins the ball. That is Dupree. Well-planned press from Kaiser Chiefs. Well taken goal by Dupree. One minute, 15 seconds into the game, Kaiser Chiefs are in the lead. However, it's a lead they would relinquish. And it was relinquished. Ace will tell us what he thinks from, you know, the laws of the game situation, but the, they was relinquished because the defending just wasn't good enough. Yeah, um, you know, very poor. You know, when you, when you go ahead in that nature, mm. uh, you want to hold on to it for as long as possible, you know. And uh, I think... Look how long press, he has on the ball. Yeah, this press just one, two, three, four, five seconds, you know, on the ball. I think it was Kunika should really have, have, you know, put pressure on him. And Let Swallow does very well here. This is his seventh goal mm. against uh, Kaiser Chiefs, getting on the shoulder of Ditlokwe. And you see Ngobo and Ditlokwe both look at Vuma. Why didn't you come out? You know, so I think being on the edge of his six yard, he probably could have, 
but that's still going to be dealt with by the two centre backs. I heard you saying a Sunday league player with five seconds is going to find that cross. There. I didn't say Never that. mind a Mulenga, <laughs> you said who's that an international. Don't put who's words a full-on in international. <laughs> he runs no, just... a perfect ball in there, and that's how they get back on level terms. However, again, when we look at it and all the angles and all the cameras, they said, spot on, you need it for this. Lezualo celebrating a draw for Amazulu. You're getting involved on Monday. Why? We have to get involved because we've got to implore our assistant referees to position themselves correctly. Because once they fail to position themselves correctly, they see ghosts. They see what? They see ghosts. They see things that do not exist. No one in that chief's defense appeals. They, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have. Because that's the offside line. Look at the bottom of your screen where the assistant referee is. Mm, he's not in line. He's three meters ahead of the offside line. And when he is there, yeah. look at the ghost. <laughs> he's, he's seeing that player being <laughs> sure. in line with the second uh, last defender. Uh, that's what he sees. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happens no. when you don't position yourself correctly. You see ghosts. Mm. No, Mara, Mara Braiz, I know. I am Kulumelo assistant ref. That's what he says. No. When he is positioned there, yeah. that's what he sees. Ah, no, 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 that's why the flag stays down. You are three meters ahead of the offside line. The laser comes out. <laughs> but Aces depicted that very well because yeah. it's all about angles. We yes. said it before. It's all about angles. If the linesman is, is a couple of meters uh, out, out, of, out of position, that's exactly what can happen. So the laser. <laughs> no, no, no. I know I'm good. We, want to, we, want to, we want to train them. Yeah. We are assisting them. Yeah. So that the, when we say mm. their decision was wrong, mm. we must also be able to say why it was hey, wrong. One, one, meter, man. Hey, one meter. No, three meters ahead of play. So in the same game, Coach Franco is so certain that they should have got a penalty for Amazulu. His reaction is one of 120% certainty that Thanti has a handball in this situation, Ace. Can you make him feel better by saying it is a handball and they should have got a penalty, or will you break his heart? I, I wish I could, you know? I wish I could, because what he saw was an outstretched arm that indeed was struck by the ball. But what he did not see was the fact that the ball first struck the body of the defender before it hit that arm. And we've always been at pains on this show to say, if it comes off a limb of the same player mm. before it strikes the arm, mm. Mm. then we don't even look at whether that arm is making the body unnecessarily bigger. It, it nullifies everything. Once mm. it strikes against the player's own body, and, and you'll see it here. Look at where it's going. That's where it, it strikes uh, the, the defender first, mm. on the stomach. And then the ball uh, slides to the left and strikes at the arm. So we don't even look at where the arm is positioned. The moment the assistant referee sees Had that... Had not hit his body, it, what would you have said? Had that moment there, I would have uh, uh, expected a penalty to be given. Even though he's standing outside the box? No, the arm is inside the penalty area. Wow. Mm? During the moment of mm. impact, uh. the arm is outstretched. Take it sure. Yeah, it's sure. Outstretched, it's inside the penalty area. That assistant referee, because the referee was far, that assistant mm. referee would have lifted his flag mm. to indicate that uh, there was a mm. foul would have gone around the corner flag to say that's a penalty. The mm. only thing that nullified it is mm. that the ball struck his body first before okay. making contact as, with as the arm. As you keep a laser? No laser. Oh. No, the laser. Oh. Laser is for special occasions. Okay. <laughs>
What's happening as far as the log is concerned? With two matches to go, let's look at the table and see where the battles are. At the top of the table, Sundowns continue, Invincible, Stellies, Pirates chasing for that uh, second position and a chance to play in the Champions League of CAF. And then the top eight, Kaiser Chiefs are 35 points. They are the team everyone is chasing in terms of trying to get into the top eight. And the chasing pack in the second half of the table, well, Bulukwani City on the same number of points as Kaiser Chiefs, just a point behind Chiefs are Golden Arrows, Chippa United in the hunt still, Amazuru still in the hunt, maybe an outside chance for Morocco Swallows to get into that top eight as you look at that. Royal AM have been dragged into the relegation battle as they are now just two points ahead of Richards Bay and that's where the playoffs are. Cape Town Spurs relegated from the DSTV Premiership. These are the matches that are coming up, what are you looking forward to there Matthew? Uh, yeah, obviously, looking at the, the who wants the, that extra Champions League spot, mm. uh, you look at Stellenbosch against uh, Sundowns. Um, obviously, before that, Royal AM have got to play Sundowns again. Um, so with that game in hand, will they make it count? Who knows? Hour and a half build up on Saturday. With the last two games of the season in the DSTV Premiership, the teams play at the same time. No advantage of knowing what somebody else has done. Pomodzo, what game are you looking forward to? Keza Chiefs, Bulukwani City. Yay! Both on 35 points. Top eight they are fighting. They are fighting for page one. One is top of page two. One is bottom of page one. Of course, I'll pay more. But listen, guys, also don't forget that Royal AM Chipper United game. Chipper are chasing to get in the top eight. They're just a point away from uh, that uh, top eight situation. And Royal AM, desperate. To I'm get away from the playoffs. I mean, I'm Pegale Chiefs. Oh. That's the one I'll be watching. All right. Lots Here's the watch. Chiefs. Full Make sure watch. you're with us for that build-up. It's an hour and a half long. Everybody's playing at the same time. The DSTV Premiership coming to an exciting culmination with so much still to play for. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you, Pomozo. Thank you, Laser VAR on a Monday. Ace Novo bringing new technology. I I... I'm your jersey number yes. 10, Thomas Mlamo. Good night. <laughs>